This video is for OCR GCSE Business Studies Unit 5. It's the second video that I've made based on the financial calculations. So the first video was on revenue, cost, profit and loss. This video is going to be on break even and the second part will be on cash and cash flow. Now remember this is just a summary of the formulas and the calculations. I'm not going to go through the entire specification for Unit 5 uh, looking at the theory. I'm just looking at the calculations in this. So to begin with break even. Break even is when total revenue is able to cover total costs and therefore profit equals zero. So it's measured in units and the units prior to break even indicates a company is going to be making a loss because they've not covered their total costs with their total revenue yet. And the units after break even suggest that their total revenue has exceeded their total costs. So now they'll be generating a profit. It is a forecast and it's often a planning tool. So what they can do is they can target when they would like to break even and they could think of ways to help that break even. And again, it, who would want to see it? Well, you can imagine uh, bank managers would want to see it if you're asking for a bank loan because they want to assess risk and think how long is it going to be before you break even. Investors, perhaps. Um, but again, you'll want to see it as the owner, as the entrepreneur, because it allows you to uh, make decisions and I suppose carry out like a what if analysis. What if I change the selling price? What happens if I get cheaper supplies? How is that going to have an impact on my break even? Now, to calculate break even, and we can do it from this financial data which I used in the first video, um, you, you need to work out the contribution first. Now, the contribution is simply the formula is price minus variable cost, and that's variable cost per unit. So it allows us to recognize how many units contribute towards paying off fixed costs. So, in other words, what we'd do is we'd get our £50, which is our selling price, and we'd minus our variable cost per unit, which is £19. Remember, 10, the 6, and the 3 added together equals 19. So that means every unit sold, that's going to contribute £31 towards paying off their fixed costs. And their fixed costs are 7440 So what we need to do then is work out, well, how many units would contribute that £31 contribute towards paying off that £7,440. So what we do is we get our fixed costs, we divide it by that contribution. So we'd, our contribution is £31, as we worked out earlier. We do our 7,440 divided by 31, and we've got the break-even of 240 units. So as soon as we've produced and sold 240 units, our profit will be zero. And then as soon as we sell 241 units, we'll start to generate a profit. If we sell 239 units, we've not broken even yet, so we're making a loss. Right, now we're going to look at cash flow. Uh, and again, just a quick summary of cash flow. So to start off with, let's look at the key terminology. Cash flow, what is it? It measures the money flowing in and out of the business. So we've got our inflows. That's the money coming into the business. Now, a large percentage of that will be from sales, but it could come from any source where money is obviously coming into the company. So that could be from a bank loan. It could be from crowdfunding. So Anywhere where money's coming into the business is going to be recorded in the inflows. You've got outflows. That's the money leaving the business. So that could be paying your workers each month. It could be based on stock and paying your suppliers. Anything that you're paying out of the company, again, is going to be recorded. And the difference between that is the net cash flow. So that's not the same as net profit. Because remember, net profit is your total revenue minus your total costs, but your inflows is not just your total revenue. It could be other sources, so it's completely different. Then you've got your opening balance and your closing balance. So let's say I close December with £20,000 in my bank account. Then I'm going to start January with £20,000 in my bank account again. So you can see it here. In July, my closing balance is 2015 In August, I start off with 2015 what I'm going to do with this cash flow is I'm going to just kind of show how I've got some of the net cash flows and we'll also uh, work out the closing balance as well for September. So let's have a look at September for net cash flow. We had inflows of £12,945, but we've got outflows of 13850 So obviously more money is flowing out of the company than what's coming in. And the difference being is... £905. So we've got minus £905, also can be shown via brackets, meaning more money is leaving the company than what's coming in. Now, in some questions, you might be given some of that information, but not all of it. So you might actually already be given the net cash flow, but you're missing, for example, your total outflows. 
So what you do is you'd have to rearrange the formula and you do your 12,945 in terms of your inflows minus your net cash flow. But because it's a minus already, you're minus in a minus, so you may as well add them and therefore you're going to get 13,850. Um, maybe you have your outflows, but you don't have your inflows. So what you do is you get your outflows and you add it to your net cash flow. And obviously, if you're doing thirteen thousand eight hundred fifty, adding a minus of nine hundred and five, you're going to get less, and that's twelve thousand nine hundred forty-five. So we get that answer. Now, if we have a look at July, um, we've got a closing balance of two thousand fifteen pounds. But how did we get it? Well, how we got it is we got our net cash flow of £255, so that was the difference between inflows and outflows, and in July, actually, they had more inflows than outflows, and they also started the month in July with seventeen, well, £1,760. So you have to add what's the net difference of that month with what you started the month with. So if you add them together, you'll get £2,015. Right, so... Let's imagine, again, you had some missing information. So let's say you had your net cash flow, but you didn't have your opening balance. What could you do? Well, what you could do is you could get your uh, closing balance of 2015, and you could simply just minus your net cash flow because you know that net cash flow added to opening balance will get your closing balance. So if you simply deduct that from your closing balance, you should get whatever's left over. So again, let's say your net cash flow is missing, you simply get your closing balance minus your opening balance and that will get your net cash flow. And that's just some questions that try to challenge you by giving you some information that you don't usually have, for example, the closing balance, but missing out information that you do usually have, for example, in this scenario, the net cash flow. And whenever you do have a question like that, just, just check over the original formula to make sure it all works well. Right, okay, so the final one. We've got our closing balance in August of £1,225, so that's going to be our opening balance in September. We know that our net cash flow is minus 905, so we simply do 1225 plus minus 905, and what we get is £320. So again, remember, they start the month positively, but unfortunately they have a negative net cash flow, but the, net, the negative net cash flow is not enough to mean that the closing balance is negative. But clearly we can see the closing balance has dipped quite significantly, but it's still in the positives.